Hi, I'm Paul and in today's video, I'm going to show you how using YAML properties in your Obsidian notes can save you time in the future. I'll share my personal journey and reveal common mistakes I made when I first started using Obsidian. This is so you can avoid making the same mistakes I did. If you're an Obsidian user who loves taking notes in Obsidian but hasn't given much thought to your YAML properties, this video is definitely for you. Join me as we explore the powerful benefits of adding YAML properties to Obsidian notes. Understanding Obsidian YAML Properties What is YAML? Obsidian YAML refers to the use of YAML front matter in notes created within the Obsidian note-taking application. YAML front matter is a standardized way to include metadata at the top of a note, formatted in a way that is easy to read and edit. YAML has some key features. YAML allows users to store structured data about a note, such as titles, tags, categories, dates, and other relevant properties. This metadata can help organize and manage notes more effectively. The YAML front matter is typically enclosed between two sets of triple dashes, with each line corresponding to a key value pair. Integration with DataView. YAML properties are particularly useful when using the DataView plugin in Obsidian, which enables users to query and visualize data from their notes. By defining structured metadata in YAML, users can create tables, lists, and queries based on stored properties. Templates and consistency. Users can create templates that include predefined YAML properties, ensuring that every note adheres to a consistent structure. This helps maintain organization across a vault search and organization. By leveraging YAML, users can filter, search, and organize notes more efficiently allowing for advanced querying and easier management of large volume of notes. The pros of YAML are it allows users to define structured metadata at the top of their notes, which can improve organization and facilitate data management. It works seamlessly with the DataView plugin, which enables users to create dynamic queries, reports, and visualizations based on the defined properties. Metadata defined in YAML can enhance the searchability of notes, allowing for more precise filtering by tags, categories, and other criteria. By using templates with YAML properties, users can ensure that notes follow a consistent format, which helps maintain organization across their vaults. Users can define their own key value pairs based on their specific needs allowing for maximum flexibility in organizing information. YAML is a human readable and easy to edit, enabling users to quickly add or modify properties without complex formatting. There is a learning curve with YAML. For new users, understanding YAML syntax and how to effectively use it in Obsidian can be a bit of a challenge initially. Small formatting errors like incorrect indentation can lead to YAML not being recognized, which may cause confusion or issues with plugins. Obscurity in large notes. If notes become cluttered with a large amount of YAML metadata, it may detract from the readability of the actual note content. Dependency on plugins. The full benefits of YAML emerge primarily when using plugins like DataView. Users not using these plugins may not fully capitalize on the advantages of YAML. Setting up templates and YAML properties can require a from investment of time, especially for users with many existing notes that need restructuring. Showcasing my YAML mistakes. When I first started using Obsidian, I used to enter my meta details like the note here for David Allen. And the reason I did that is because I didn't understand the concept of Obsidian YAML properties. I didn't really know what three little dashes followed by a property was going to really benefit me from putting it here where I could actually read it. So if we look in a reading view, I thought why well, I put my properties up here hidden or over to the side here, if I could just put them in plain text where I can read them. So I can see, I can put my link here to getting things done by David Allen. I can put the topic links and also the tags. So why would I need to put that up in the ammo property. This was before Obsidian added this little 
add property feature here inside of Obsidian. So I went ahead and created a lot of notes with just the meta details shown as here. It wasn't until I discovered the most popular community plugin for Obsidian called Data View that I really discovering the limitations of not adding these properties to my notes. So I'll illustrate what I mean. Let's have a look at Aiden Mills who has YAML properties added at the top. We can see that we also have a data view query showing the books written by the author and inside the book note, we have all our correct YAML properties. So this is how it should look. Let's see why this is the case. So if we close this book, going to go down and select Jim Quick. So Jim is using the same meta details as David. So let's go into the source mode for Aiden Mills and grab the data view query and add it to Jim. And all we're gonna do is change the author to Jim. And what should happen is we should get a list of books written by Jim Quick in this data view query because it's looking for the property author or the tag book. So if we set up our YAML properties correctly, then we should get results. So let's have a look. We can see there are no results to show for the data view query, but up in this meta details here, we've got a book called Limitless by Jim Quick. So let's open up the book. So we can see we don't have any YAML properties listed here for this particular book. So when we're trying to do a data view query, it doesn't know that this is a book written by Jim Quick because we haven't got an author property with his name in it. So we would have to add our three dashes We're in author. Then we would have to match to make sure it's a link. We also should have the tags listed in here as well. In this case, it should be book. I can see I'm pulling in a cover and topics. So there are two more properties that need to be added. I can see I've already put my topics here. So these need to go here. Now, if I leave it like that, I'm going to have some formatting issues and it's not still not gonna show my properties. So I need to make sure I enclose my links in quotations. That also needs to be my topics. Now I have some properties. So let's preview over to the left. So now I have my book coming up with my topics. So all I need to do is add the cover and that's going to match all my other authors as shown here. So you can see by doing your metadata incorrectly from the start, we'll create a lot of work for you later down the track. And I'll show you all the other authors that I need to spend time fixing up where the YAML properties are missing. So it's very important to add this data into your notes from the start. Otherwise, you will spend a lot of time fixing it in the future. YAML best practices. In front of me here, I now have a standardized template for my author, which includes the date added, the tags, the books, the author, and the topics. I also have a standardized book template, which includes the date added, the date completed, the tags, the category, the topics, author, URL, rating, priority, format, cover, status, and aliases. I still have my meta details embedded in a hidden callout, but these will not be searchable in my data view queries because I haven't made them searchable. So by using a standardized template, it's going to save me a bunch of time in the future fixing up all my notes so that I can fully utilize the data view plugin. So the best thing to do is to spend time developing your templates throughout your vault, which includes all the YAML properties that you think you may want to search as your vault begins to grow. How to create YAML properties. So the first thing we wanna do is navigate to our settings, go into your core plugins, scroll down to the core plugin properties view, make sure it is enabled. This is going to place a 
little icon on our right pane. Navigate to your editor, ensure that your properties in document are set to visible. You can also set to source if you prefer to work in source mode. So we have a few options to add our first property. We can hit control semicolon that's going to add properties and then it's going to ask us which property we'd like to add obsidian comes with some default properties which are tags aliases and css classes if we left click and try to change the property type we cannot change it for the default properties if we want to add a custom property we can select add property by left clicking. And then we just type the name of the property we'd like to add. If we already have some existing properties, they will show up down in the select bar here. So I'll just put in the property author. If we have authors already entered, it will give us the option to add the authors here. So if we wanted to add Ada Mills, we can select Ada Mills. If we jump into the source mode, we can see it's formatted the YAML for us. If we have multiple authors, then we just hit enter, put in our quotations and enter the name of the additional author. YAML supports multiple property types such as text, list, number, checkbox, date, and date and time. With the core properties plugin, we have all our properties listed on the right hand side here. So we can see for author, we have 72 authors in our vault. We can also right click and change the property type here. If we're using templater in any of these properties, we will not want to change the property type as it will override the templater code in your template. So that's just something to be mindful of. So let's go open up our book template and we'll have a look at our properties here. So we have a custom property called date added with a templater snippet of code. So if we wanted to match the same in our demo over here, we can just copy paste. I like to use a special character in between spaces for my properties. So let's go add tags now. If we add the tag book in the front GUI view, and then jump back into the source mode. We can see how it adds it there. Alias is a good one. You want to use an acronym or a nickname or have something to name the note by. So say you didn't want to call this one YAML demo. You could say YAML example. And we control O and type in YAML. We have our YAML example alias as well as our YAML demo note. CSS classes is when you want to add a CSS class that is in your snippet or theme. We can see here we have a type mismatch. It expects a date, so it won't insert the date until the template is applied. So you will see warning messages like this for template syntax. If we take the space out where tags is, we can see we have a syntax error here. If you're looking for ideas of what YAML properties to use, open up your file explorer in Windows, right click the column, navigate down to more, and inside details you can see examples of all the YAML properties that could be used throughout your vault. You can also look online for existing templates. If this one was to be a book template, then we would have to add our YAML properties, put our next one, which is topics. It's probably going to be easier to use the button here. So then we'd put URL where we got the book from. We'd put our rating of the book. We could put the format of the book, whether it's an ebook, Kindle, or a paperback. We would want a property for the cover so that we could show you the book cover. We might want to put the status, whether we're reading the book whether it's already summarized. And once you've added all those properties, you just check the property type. So status would be a list because you will have multiple statuses to choose from. Cover would be text. Format would be a list. Priority would be a list. Rating would also be a list. URL would be text. Topics would be a list. And author would also be a list. You can also add true or false. So you could put a done that would be a checkbox. So that would just simply be a true or false. And that just looks like so. It's false. And if we take out false, it's empty. 
You could put a date completed, which will give us a date picker and allow us to pick the date. And you could do that as a date or a date and time. And if you wanted to move these properties up or down, you could left click and drag and move it where you would like. Say you had multiple topics. Say you had a topic about habits. And you had one about focus. So you can put those as links. A link to notes about focus or notes about habits. And if we have a look at the source code, we can see how links are formatted in two square brackets followed by quotation. If we were not to put the quotation mark, then we would get a syntax error. If we just put the word focus, we wouldn't get a syntax error, but we couldn't click to get to the note focus. So we need to make sure that we select the linked note to go to the focus note. As your vault grows, you will find you'll have multiple properties listed over to the right hand side here. So if we click the property year, it's going to bring up all the notes with the property year. So that's another way of searching our vault. So there is another useful feature in Obsidian. If you control P and type in properties, you can show the file properties. If I click show file properties, my properties now show on the right hand side under this little info icon here. And I can add properties here if I want to, or I can adjust the properties that I have here. And this is quite useful if you choose to add your properties in the note, and then you can make changes to them on the right hand side here. I prefer to display mine visible, and then I put a CSS class in my snippets folder to hide my properties by default. And then if I want to reveal them, I just simply roll over the properties to reveal them. So it's worth mentioning that Obsidian will allow inline metadata with two colons. If you put the inline metadata topic followed by two colons, it allows you to place your topic in as so. Now this will be recognized in a data view query, but it won't show up in the properties field. So I'll just put habit test and then I'll look for habit test. And you can see that it doesn't show up there. But if I do a data view query, type the list from where topic equals habit test, you can see that I can still reference this note by using that property which equals the inline metadata here. I hope this video has provided you with some valuable insights. By correctly adding YAML properties to your templates and notes from the beginning, you'll save yourself hours of time in the future by avoiding the hassle of fixing missing metadata. If you found this video valuable, please consider sharing it with a friend who might also benefit. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.